A musical performer's talent is like a flame. It lights quickly and burns steadily for years. There are times when it flickers, but it seldom goes out. Consider Bill Monroe, Ralph Stanley, and Earl Scruggs all had long careers and performed into their 80s, but others ignited early and through hard living extinguished their flames much too soon. One singer who followed this course was Keith Whitley, who came out of the mountains of eastern Kentucky and exploded onto the bluegrass scene with the Clinch Mountain Boys, had success as a solo act, and then suddenly passed away at only 34. Jackie Keith Whitley was born July 1, 1954, and grew up around Sandy Hook, Kentucky. Keith had an appreciation for music from an early age. His father, an electrician, bought him a guitar after he won a talent contest at six. His mother, who was a newspaper editor, was a huge influence on his musical career as she played multiple instruments and taught him basic guitar chords. Before he turned 14, he and his brother Dwight were performing on radio and television. He grew up in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, surrounded by the sounds of Appalachia, especially the Stanley Brothers. But Keith's ambition tended to be more towards hard country singers like Hank Williams, George Jones, Merle Haggard, and his favorite, Lefty Frizzell. While a teenager, Whitley showed an early propensity for reckless behavior. He and his buddies passed the time drinking moonshine bourbon and driving at high speeds on winding mountain roads. He miraculously escaped death on two occasions, once when a car he was riding failed to make a curve at 120 miles per hour. The driver was killed. Later, he drove his car over a 120-foot cliff into a frozen river, escaping with only a broken collarbone. By the time he was 15, he had decided to make a career for himself in music. But to succeed in eastern Kentucky, he had to make his mark as a bluegrass singer. In 1968, he met Ricky Skaggs. They were the same age, and they hit it off. They discovered they both had a love for the music of the Stanley Brothers and could harmonize perfectly when performing Stanley Brothers songs. They formed a tribute band and started playing at bars and clubs in the area. A famous story tells of Ralph Stanley and the Clinch Mountain Boys being delayed for a club appearance by a flat tire. When they arrived, Dr. Stanley said he could hear what he thought was he and his brother Carter singing, but he assumed it was a song on the jukebox and was surprised to find Keith and Ricky performing on stage. The club owner had asked them to fill in when the Clinch Mountain Boys were delayed. Ralph said they were doing the Stanley Brothers better than the Stanley Brothers. He was so impressed he hired them on the spot. Keith toured and recorded with the group for two and a half years. Gentlemen, the other young man I'd like to introduce to you, standing back on my left, is one of the finest lead singers in the business now when it comes to singing the old-time bluegrass. He really puts his heart in it, and he's one of the finest young gentlemen I ever met, too. And that means just as much as the talent, you know, you, you need to be a man with it. And I, believe me, right here is one that is. Real proud to have him with us. He was born and raised in eastern Kentucky, way back in the sticks, a little town called Sandy Hook. Let's make welcome Colonel Keith Whitley. Big hand for him. It makes no difference for I wonder. No matter what I say. Whitley had an on-again, off-again relationship with the Clinch Mountain Boys. He left the band in 1972 to pursue a solo career, but returned two years later as lead singer and guitarist. He departed again in 1977 and joined J.D. Crow and the New South. They were a progressive bluegrass band where he felt he could have more creative freedom. He was the lead singer from 1978 to 1982 and recorded two albums with the group including the critically acclaimed Somewhere Between. Crow intentionally arranged and produced the album to provide Whitley with a platform for his gift as a honky-tonk singer. In 1982, Keith decided to make the switch to country music and moved to Nashville to pursue a career. He signed with RCA Records. His first solo album in 1984, A Hard Act to Follow, 
was not a critical success. Fans and critics complained the songs were too erratic. His second album, L.A. to Miami, in 1985, was much more successful, giving him his first top 20 country hit single, Miami, My Amy, and three more hit songs, Ten Feet Away, Homecoming 63, and Hard Livin'. Around this time, he was promoting the L.A. to Miami album. He met his future wife, Lori Morgan, the daughter of Grand Ole Opry star George Morgan. They were married in November 1986 and had one son, Jesse Keith Whitley, who is now a singer-songwriter himself. Whitley also adopted Lori's daughter, Morgan, from a previous marriage. Lori had been warned by Whitley's manager about the ramifications of marrying an alcoholic. Life with Keith was not always perfect. Lori Morgan recalled, It was like a ticking time bomb. I knew all this going into the relationship. I thought as much as I loved Keith, surely that would help him. I feel in my own heart I kept Keith alive a lot longer because I was there all the time. Every time the phone would ring, it was in the back of my mind that there was somebody calling to tell me he'd been in a wreck or died of alcohol. It was a living hell. I was on pins and needles when he was out on the road. In 1987, Whitley approached RCA and asked to have more input in the materials he was recording. He wanted to be more involved in the writing and production of the songs. The album Don't Close Your Eyes was released in 1988 and was a big success. Some of the songs included It's All Coming Back to Me Now, which Whitley had contributed to writing while at Tree Publishing. Another hit was a remake of Lefty Frizzell's I Never Go Around Mirrors. The first three singles from the album, When You Say Nothing At All, I'm No Stranger to the Rain, and Don't Close Your Eyes, all went to number one on Billboard's country music chart in the fall of 1988. He also earned a CMA award as solo artist and a Grammy nomination for Best Male Country Vocal Performance. Keith Whitley was on a roll and about to emerge as one of the biggest stars in Nashville when tragedy struck. As in his youth, Whitley continued to have an affinity for fast cars and an excessive taste for Kentucky bourbon. Keith told the Chicago Tribune once, I learned to do things the way the old timers did it. I thought everybody had to drink to be in this business. Lefty drank, Hank drank, George Jones was still drinking, and I had to. That's just the way it was. You couldn't put that soul in your singing if you weren't about three sheets in the wind. On the morning of May 9, 1989, he had a brief conversation on the phone with his mom and a visit from his brother-in-law, Lane Palmer, to discuss a golf outing later that morning. Lane returned to find Keith dead in bed. The official cause of death was alcohol poisoning. The medical examiner stated that his blood level was 0.47, the equivalent of 20 one-ounce shots of 100-proof whiskey. The flame that burned so brightly had gone out. Keith Whitley was only 34. Lori Morgan was in Alaska on a promotional tour when she learned about Keith's passing. On her way back to Nashville, she remembered a card Keith had given her at the airport when she left. It read, Would you like to know what I wish for you? If I could have any wish I wanted, this is my wish. That in your life, which is so precious to me, may worries, troubles, and problems never linger. May they only make you that much stronger and able and wise. May you rise each day with sunlight in your heart, success in your path, answers to your prayers, and that smile that I always love to see in your eyes. I love you, Keith. Nashville mourned his death as black ribbons were placed along Music Row in his honor. More than 500 mourners attended Keith's funeral, and his longtime friend Ricky Skaggs presented the eulogy. Skaggs spoke specifically about the dangers of drug and alcohol abuse. Keith was buried at Spring Hill Cemetery outside Nashville. The cemetery is the final resting place of many bluegrass and country music performers, including Keith's father-in-law, George Morgan, Roy Acuff, Earl Scruggs, Jimmy Martin, Kitty Wells, Hank Snow, and many others. Whitley's third album, I Wonder Do You Think of Me, was released three months after his death and solidified his place among top performers in Nashville. The album generated two number one hits, including the title track, 
and It Ain't Nothing. He earned many posthumous awards, including CMA Single of the Year, I'm No Stranger to the Rain, and a duet with his wife, Lori, earned the CMA Vocal Event of the Year Award in 1990. He became a posthumous member of the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2022. Ralph Stanley wrote of Keith in his 2009 biography, When you heard him on the radio, you knew who it was. If he had lived, he would have been one of the greatest singers Nashville ever saw. But he had something deep down inside of him that wouldn't let him alone. 